Hello everyone, welcome to Narrated Survival A survival series where I'm not really going to be showing you exactly how we played But just show a few replays of the things we've accomplished and talk, kind of talk over it a bit I'm playing this together with my brother Ghost Rider And he is uploading first person perspectives on his channel So if you're more interested in what exactly we did, you can have a look over there now, we're playing this with uh, a several amount of mods on the Fabric Mod Loader. Uh, this pack in particular was custom built by Ghost. And yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. So, so to start off with, we're just collecting some basic resources. Uh, just mining a bit of wood mostly. So let's talk a bit about the mods we got in here. So Ghost uh, wanted to settle with a bit of a more challenging start than usual. So we have a few mods in here that make it so we can't really use stone tools yet. We can't mine a lot of blocks yet. Uh, we'll have to level up to unlock those kinds of things. So we're very limited in what we can and can't do right now. Our tools are rather weak, so they break quite fast. And yeah, we'll kind of have to work together a little bit in the start, uh, get a few skill points going. One of the mods we also have in here is uh, a mod that cuts trees down right away. Uh, you'll see it doesn't always work exactly as planned. But, in general, it's going to come in handy quite a bit. We have some amazing terrain generation in this pack. As you can see in front of us, we have some very tall mountains, beautiful mountain ranges. And later on, you will also see big, big forests for us to go through. In addition to this, we also have a lot of structure mods in here. So it's going to be a lot of fun exploring in this pack. So of course the downside of this generation is that there's going to be a lot of scaling we'll need to do. So getting to where you want to be is going to be a little tricky. We also only have three hearts to start off with, so getting down these hills without dying is another challenge. Luckily in this case there was a nice puddle of water for us to just jump into. built close by to the village and prefers that my base is somewhere close to him so we can at least interact a lot as well. So we're just out exploring trying to find a village for us that'll do this. And meanwhile we're also finding more amazing terrain generation like this mountain range you see in the background here. A very smooth kind of like platform going past the side of it. And then as we continue exploring we actually come upon a nice little abandoned camp. We'll be using this camp as a little start base, just so we have a place to put down our chests. So we can actually figure our inventories a bit and kind of get some basic supplies going. And one of the mods we have in this pack is one that automatically places saplings that are thrown on the ground. Which set up for a little interesting moment when I didn't realize Ghost 3 was settling on the floor and neither of us spotted it. Come here. There we go. Almost. Okay, there we go. What the f I fuck? So Ghost has gone off exploring a little bit more and he found this little abandoned portal. So he's just loading things in there and he gave me the coordinates to it as well, so I made my way down there afterwards. I stopped a little bit to admire the cave below. 
and then I too went to loot the portal. Now one thing Ghost hadn't told me is that there would be a little surprise when I opened the chest. As you can also see, one of the effects we have in this mod is a bleeding effect, which makes you bleed when you get hit by something like a sword. This bleeding unfortunately didn't really stop, and since we're so early in the game we don't have any bandages to make it go away, so I was just stuck running around leaving a blood trail everywhere I went. And of course I can't really keep going like that because the with just three hearts you're constantly in low health so I decided to just embrace the, you know, this little creeper over here. See if we could get some cobblestone out of it. Which of course we didn't. That's some very strong stone. The ghost decided to start putting up a little wall around the base to protect us from the mobs. As we've noticed that's uh, in this particular mob pack, mob spawns seem to be boosted quite a bit so it has a lot of mobs and they spawn fast so he thought it would be a good idea to throw up a little wall to at least keep most of them out. Of course acknowledging that spiders would still be able to get in at least we wouldn't have to deal with zombies and skeletons in here. I made a very small starter farm just so a few plants could grow while we were just doing things around our base. We also exploited this poor enderman who just seemed to completely forget how to teleport and just got stuck in place. Didn't know how to fight back. Our base set up for now, we set out to explore. Now unfortunately at this point the replay mods kinda started bugging out and started everything with these blast pellets on the screen, so we're just gonna have to deal with that for now until I figure a way around that. As we're exploring here we see a few islands popping up in the distance, with one in particular uh, seeming a little out of place and hard to get through. Oh, look at the island, look no. at the island. What? Oh, there's water for me. We can get on there. Hell yeah. So as luck would have it, turns out there is a way for us to get onto the island as it graciously lets down a waterfall for us to ascend from. Before we explore over there though, there's this little shipwreck just lying on the beach that we decided to loot first. I made my way up alone since Ghost wanted to explore a different direction. However, unfortunately it was getting night time by the time I got up there. And what was waiting up for me there was less than nice, let's just say. So as I realized I have the attention of the entire island's population on me, I try to make a run for it and jump off to safety. But all of us, I never make it. Just hope that fucking zombie leaves me alone for long enough to sleep. I don't see thing. Ah, uh, it's a speedy zombie, are you shitting me? And a skeleton has found me, no fuck off, I swear I am bleeding. What the fuck? So yeah, after making my way back from the last death, I experienced the strangest death I have ever had in a survival world. I have never died to a lightning strike before, and yet somehow, it happened. Now I finally made my way to the islands, in daytime while I have a well to explore. There wasn't that much on the island, but the main reason I wanted to get up here was because there were 
cherry trees, and I wanted to collect some of that. In addition, there was also some dark oak on this island, so I also grabbed that. Instead of its trees, it was now time to move on to the little wooden house I had spotted on the distance. I also told Ghost roughly where to find that, and he would meet us there. As I got that, Ghost was still a while away, so I decided to go ahead and start exploring already. Let's go to the sea structure. Actually, Maybe I we'll... just realized this what? looks like an almost an exact photo of this house. This yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, there's locks in it. Are there locks in this house? There are. Oh, you, that would be so sick if I just took a photo in real time from this. That would actually be sick if that's what it did. Slime. Oh, that's a bad moment to drink. So with Ghost's untimely demise uh, behind us, we set out to explore a bit further. Ghost had found a sea structure he said he wanted to explore with me, so we started heading towards that. On the way there, we also saw another portal that Ghost had already explored, but I hadn't yet. So I decided to make a quick stop there first. There was 
also this little tiny ship in the ocean that used to have a villager on it who managed to escape and get back to the land. Of course, the ghost didn't like that so he decided to kept the, kidnap the villager and forcefully drag him back to his little boat, there to starve alone on the ocean. Arriving at the big portal there was a single chest there to loot and of course just like a small portal it again spawned an armament so for me to defeat. However instead I chose to just cowardly run circles around him so I wouldn't have to deal with him. Since you know we only had wooden swords. The final thing left for us to do in this episode was to explore the little sea structure that Ghost had seen. You can already see it in the distance, it looks like sort of a small dome. So we figured there would just be like a dungeon in there, maybe like a spawner or two. And we would just make quick work of it, grow a bit of loot and head out. As we arrive here at the structure, you might notice that something isn't quite right. But of course, since we're gamers, we don't look up nor down, so we didn't really notice anything. We were just focused on the dome. That is, until we suddenly got hit with the Elder Guardian effect, making it impossible for us to break rocks. So we decided that perhaps this was nuts the right day to tackle this structure. What is that sound? You just died. Well then. You just died. Yep. Oh. Whoa. What? Uh, Wait, does it go all the way down here? Look under the water. What? What? <laughs> what? Yeah, so, turns out that guardian killing me allowed us to see what was truly underneath the ocean. A gigantic sea temple. The dome we had seen was simply the top of it. While we didn't have the resources to actually explore it yet, we couldn't help ourselves but go into spectator mode to have a quick fly around and see what this majestic thing looked like on the inside.
And with our tour completed, so does this episode come to an end. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you'll take the time to check out the full episode on Ghost's channel.